we are entering the webinar series on cbct before we would begin there is a message uh, those who are participating in the webinar series please message your email address and correct name in the chat box so that we can issue e certificates and also if there are any questions you may please type it in the message box at the end we can discuss with the speaker ladies and gentlemen we are blessed with a great opportunity to listen to the words of an acclaimed and seasoned speaker i am talking about dr junaid ahmed associate dean professor oral medicine and radiology manipal college of dental sciences mangalore his area of interest is mainly on orofacial pain and tmj disorders so is also expertized in 3d imaging and cbct i welcome you sir uh thank you uh, very good morning to everyone uh, i hope everyone can hear me yes sir uh i will share my screen uh, let's see whether it is uh... Yes. So, can you all see the screen? Yes, uh, my sir. presentation. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, and I'm audible, and the screen is visible, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, firstly, a very good uh, morning to everyone. Uh, and uh, at the outset, I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Ausuf uh, and uh, the entire oral medicine team, and also the management. for uh, acquiring a wonderful uh, plan maker cbct uh, large field of view machine which i'm sure is uh, state of the art and i've seen uh, uh, the department and the area where they have set up the machine it's it's really done well it's planned quite well i'm sure it will help not only oral medicine but all the departments uh, of kmct college uh let me go to my presentation without wasting much time uh cbct and its indications is the main thing that i'll discuss today uh based on my working for the last 7 years on this machine the funny part is uh, even though we feel a lot of times uh cbct interpretation and knowledge of cbct has still not reached the dental fraternity here is one uh, reference by a medical uh, person you know an mbbs qualified person for a ct ct scan look what is written he is written ct scan of the brain ct scan was introduced in 1970s and even now the medical fraternity actually doesn't know the full form of uh, ct or don't even know how to represent it right so we are not uh, lagging that behind when you see what the medical people still don't have enough knowledge about not that uh, we dentists have acquired enough knowledge about uh, cbct now uh, this is one referral from a very well known dentist uh, from bangalore itself uh, look at what that person has written you know ctbt i mean the full form would be clotting time and bleeding time right uh, so even now Uh, not just the medical of course uh, but even in the dental fraternity the knowledge of cbct the penetration of uh, cbct interpretation and uh, knowing how to refer a cbct or for what uh, conditions to refer for a cbct is still very less even though cbct has come into practice in india probably after 2010 it has been in vogue uh, even though cbct was introduced in the late 90s in dentistry but uh, here in india it has to come into use after 2010 but like i said the knowledge is still not very good so what exactly is uh, cone beam uh, computed tomography or more popularly known as cbct now cbct imaging is a 3d imaging modality and the most significant technological advance in uh, technological advance in maxillofacial imaging since the introduction of panoramic radiography so basically it is a compact faster and safer version of a regular ct 
by compact you mean uh, it doesn't have a gantry you know uh, the ring like uh, plastic structure that usually surrounds uh, 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 the stretcher where the patient is laid down in a ct machine right so it doesn't usually have that uh, so it, it is quite compact and much faster the scan time is much faster when compared to a ct machine it is less than a minute most of the times and a safer version of a regular ct safer simply because the radiation dose is much lesser when compared to a ct so like i said the radiation dose is re reduced fits into any dental practice and uh, as you saw the promo video uh, by uh, dr also and his team uh, the machine is just like an opg you know uh, it can fit into any dental practice and is easily accessible by patients the full scan is typically under 1 minute and it provides improved data for decision making at an affordable expense usually a cbct scan uh, the cost is half the rate of a ct scan probably even lesser so all computer tomography scanners uh, the source and the detector are mounted on a rotating gantry uh, can you all see the cursor that i'm moving on the screen Yes, sir. Uh, yes. You, yes, you can see the cursor, right? So this is a gantry where you have the X-ray source and the detector, right? And the patient is laid down on the stretcher, and the stretcher moves inside. So this is how a CT uh, scan setup would be. Uh, whereas a CBCT imaging is performed uh, using a rotating uh, platform or a gantry, uh, and carrying an X-ray source and a detector. Like I said, it looks perfectly like an opg machine there's not much change at all even though there are cbct machines which do have a gantry but uh, more, uh, nine, more than 90% of the cbct machines now come without the presence of a gantry right so the fan beam the fan beam upon which the medical ct is based interrogates only a slice of tissues whereas the cone beam or the cbct interrogates a three dimensional region within a 360 degree rotation uh, sometimes as low as 180 degrees but uh, most of the machines that we have is 360 degrees so we won't get into that 180 degree one uh, so what you have to understand is in a ct it is usually fan based or sectional based you know computer tomography sectional radiography whereas in a cbct the entire volume is taken in one single rotation of 360 degrees right uh, so the difference is here it is in sections in cbct it is one full volume in one single rotation so if i have if i have to show it figuratively so in a ct slices are taken of a particular area of a particular region and then it is reconstructed into a whole structure or a organ or whatever you can call it okay so, uh, so many slices reconstructed into one big shape okay there is a cbct what it does is actually the opposite it incorporates the entire volume in one rotational sequence of the c arm and uh, which is necessary to acquire enough data for image reconstruction so it acquires the entire image okay first and then it is sliced into sagittal coronal and the axial sections so like i said it is actually ulta in ct the first the slices and then reconstructed into a whole image whereas in a cbct first and first a whole image and then reconstructed into axial sagittal or coronal now let's come to the differences between ct and uh, cbct we'll come to the superficial subtle differences not very specific differences right so bone density now this is a very major uh, major concern in cbct as of today in ct accurate bone density in hu hu is hounsfield units which is nothing but the quantitative measurement of radio density right uh, which which in very simple words it means if the hounsfield unit value is say for example minus 1000 okay it means that area is air if the hounsfield unit value is say plus 400 or plus 
it means that area is bone or a hard structure okay so you can very 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 well say with the hounds feel unit what that structure is okay it could be a soft tissue it could be air it could be fluid it could be bone but the values of hu will predict what structure it is which is very accurate in a ct whereas in a cbct as of now hu is not very reliable because of various factors one is because of increased scattered radiation which is seen in cbct which is not there in cbct yeah. simply pain happened irritation happened irritation ah pain Yes. Yeah. Uh, can I go ahead? Okay. Uh, right. Uh, th there seems to be a slight disturbance. One second. Hello. No, plus tobacco can I just? Hello. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You can continue, sir. It's okay. Uh, I can continue. continue? Malignant transformation. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So, like I said, the uh, HU is not very reliable in CBCT because of various reasons. One of the reasons is because of increased X-ray scatter, which is seen in CBCT, but is actually not seen much in CT, simply because they have something what is known as an anti-scatter grid. some of the other reasons why cbct is not reliable for hu is it doesn't have a very developed uh, well developed software algorithm which is seen in uh, ct so it is there for so many years so the software algorithm is very well developed but unfortunately cbct is not yet another reason why the hu is not reliable in uh, cbct is uh, because of the shape of the beam which is a cone beam So what happens is at the periphery it diverges, right? So the values which you get in different areas within that area of interest in the head and neck region is not very accurate. Unlike in CT, where it goes through a section uh, or a slice, you know, fan beam shaped in each area. So those sections are much more reliable in terms of uh, HU. There is not much of superimposition. Okay, there are other reasons also. We will not get into that. But remember, HU in CBCT is not as reliable as it is in CT. Of course, the radiation dosage is much higher in CT, ten to fifteen times higher in the CT when compared to CBCT. The scan time is much more in CT when compared to CBCT. Usually, around a minute to a few minutes, depending on whether it is plain CT or contrast CT. The scan time is much more, whereas in CBCT. the scan times are very much less than a minute the cost of the scan like i said it's more than double for a ct uh, but it is much lesser when in in cct the voxel size uh, I, i i will not get too much into physics here the voxel size uh, is basically the detector element which is there uh, it is cuboidal in shape in a ct machine uh that is minimum size is 0.5 mm now what you mean by cuboidal is basically it is a 3d rectangle whereas in a cbct the voxel size is basically first of all much lesser it is up to 0.1 mm which means the smaller the voxel size better the resolution and the second thing is it is cubical which means it is a three dimensional square so all the four sides are equal so because all the four sides are equal when it is reconstructed in different planes the resolution is not lost whereas in uh, in uh, ct coming to the next point reconstructed images in views other than axial is not accurate simply because the voxel shape by itself is cuboidal and it is not equal in all four sides in images other than axial in ct is not very reliable whereas in cbct since the voxel shape is cubical it is equal in all sides the reconstructed images in views other than axial is highly accurate okay now like i said i'm not going much into physics and i'm assuming you all of you know a little bit of it now just in case uh, there is something where you're not understanding what i'm trying to convey here you can always put the point across to the moderator and i'll answer that after the after the presentation okay so don't you worry about that 
Right. So now let's come to the radiation dose. Now, as you can see, the radiation dose in CBCT, when compared to, let's say, a panoramic uh, radiograph, is uh, roughly around uh, 10 times more when you see a full mouth series cone beam CT. But when you see, see, uh, see a small field of view area, which encompasses a few teeth, uh, the radiation dose is quite similar to a digital highest quality or highest resolution panoramic film. Okay, so this is a normal CBCT. Now what has happened is even in for that matter in the plan maker mid machine, we have different scan modes. We have a normal mode, we have a, a low dose mode, we have an ultra low dose mode, which believe it or not, the ultra low dose mode uh, um, radiation dose is even lesser than that of a panoramic image or panoramic radiograph. You know, but the, of course the downside is the resolution and the quality of the image is not as good as the normal uh, cone beam CT uh, projections. You also have uh, high definition and high resolution and endo mode in CBCTs, which are of a higher radiation dose, which of course you cannot compare with panoramic and all. But uh, like I said, there are different scan modes in CBCT. Now, full mouth or a large FOB CBCT, which covers the entire skull region, both the jaws, PNJs, it usually has much more uh, uh, radiation dose, which is around 150 micro sievert. Now, like I said, CTs have 10 to 15 times uh, more, uh, more radiation dose when compared to CBCT. As you can see, medical CT, the radiation dose is between 1200 to 3300 milli sievert. Now, radiation can be minimized, uh, very simple things that you, are, you have to just remember by using protective barriers, uh, by uh, decreasing the exposure factors, by selecting the field of view. For example, earlier what used to happen is, even if you wanted the CBCT of one or two teeth for probably implant or endodontic uh, evaluation, you still had to take uh, the entire uh, head and neck region CBCT. But now it's not like that. Now you have multiple field of views. So because of that, what will happen is uh, if you decrease the field of view, like for example, there is something known as 5 by 5 centimeter or 50 by 50 millimeter field of view, which will only uh, give you uh, the image of four or five teeth in that particular region, whether it's mandible or maxilla. So automatically the radiation will be reduced. So field of view is an important criteria for decreasing radiation. Like I said, the different scan modes, you have normal mode, you have low dose mode, you have ultra low dose mode, as the name suggests, the doses are lower in low dose and ultra do low dose. But at the same time, if you, if you want the resolution to be very high, for example, if you want to see the canals, if you want to see the quality of the obturation, there is something called as endo mode, where because the resolution is higher, the radiation dose is more. So always remember that. So different scan modes also influence the radiation that is there. And also the voxel size. Now, what you have to remember in voxel size is smaller the voxel size, better the resolution, but higher the radiation. So you have to select a voxel size which will uh, balance both the resolution and the radiation. By itself, a uh, lot of people ask, you know, when should we refer a CBCT? My simplest answer to that would be whenever the benefits outweigh the risks associated with the scan, you should refer for a CBCT. Now that can, now where, where are those conditions, which are those conditions where the benefits outweigh the risk is dependent on the clinician's uh, judgment. Right, so we were talking about field of view. Field of view is a term used to refer to the scan volume. Now, the most important thing you have to remember is the amount of X-ray scatter or the random noise that happens because of the X-ray scatter decreases with decrease in the field of view. And usually the small volumes unit tend to offer the highest image resolution. So you have uh, basically small, medium and large field of views. Small field of views, uh, like I said, uh, usually uh, the images of four or five teeth, uh, they're normally indicated for uh, two or three implants in that region or for endodontic evaluation 
or a single impacted tooth, localized impacted tooth. The medium FOV is usually, uh, it encompasses both the jaws, the maxilla and the mandible. And it is used for multiple implants or uh, multiple impacted teeth or uh, multiple teeth evaluation in terms of a cyst, etc. Right? And a large FOV encompasses up to the frontal sinus and below the uh, inferior border of the mandible and also from PMJ to TMJ. So any conditions affecting the TMJ, um, uh, panfacial fractures, uh, large tumors or cysts affecting the head and neck region. So large field of views can be indicated. So you have to know the indications of the small FOV and you have to address it that you want a small field of view for this particular condition or lesion. Right. Now, the most important thing uh, that you have to understand is in, in a 3D imaging is to identify the structures in different planes. Now, until now, what, was, what has been happening is we see a two-dimensional fixed radiograph. For example, an IOPA, when you see it, you see uh, the lateral section of the teeth. You see the floor of the sinus, for example, in the maxillary teeth. That, that image never changes. That remains constant. But in a CBCT, what happens is the same, the same area, the same teeth, when you see in a sagittal, when you see in a coronal, when you see in an axial section, it changes shape because you're seeing it in a different direction. So you have to be very, very sure. You have to know exactly how these landmarks, landmarks by itself is a different class, uh, which uh, cannot be taken off for the lack of time. But you have to understand that each of these structures or landmarks will appear to be of different shape in different planes. So you have to understand everything in, in the perspective of a plane. Right, so multiplanar imaging, like I said, in different planes and reformatting can be in axial. To put it very simply, axial is any section that is taken from down to up or up to down. Coronal, coronal is any section that is taken from front to back or back to front. And sagittal, any section which is taken side to side, lateral sections, right? So you have to really understand and really remember these planes, which is axial, coronal, and Sagittal, which is the basis of any 3D image, or especially in CBC. Right. Uh, so this is an actual uh, uh, plane image. Okay. Now, why I'm showing you this no, is not to show you anatomy. Don't worry about that. Like I said, anatomy is a totally different uh, uh, subject altogether. We'll have to take a different class for that. But to show you what is important, for example, at the base of the nose, okay, at the base of the nose is, is this is a section taken. This is just, I'm giving an example. This section is taken at the base of the nose. And this section at the base of nose will show the following landmarks. The anterior nasal spine, inferior nasal concha, the zygomatic bone, the coronoid process, the uh, pterygoid plates, the eustachian tube, uh, the fossa of Rosenmiller or the pharyngeal recess, etc., etc. The condyle, the coronoid, right, etc., etc. Now, this example is for you to understand okay, if this particular section was taken in the region of, say, uh, the cervical region of the maxillary teeth, you wouldn't have seen these structures. Right? So, in, uh, so uh, the bottom line is not only you have to remember the anatomy in the different planes, which will be visualized differently in actual coronal and sagittal. You also have to understand at different sections in a particular plane, for example, in axial mouth, there will be different landmarks visible. The landmarks which is visible at the base of the nose will not be visible when your sections come down or up. So you have to get oriented to that. You have to keep learning that too. Now, why else the plane, planes are important is because each of these planes have, has its own indications. For example, in axial sections, if you want to see the integrity of the palatal and the buccal cortical plates, the palatal and the buccal cortical plates, the axial sections are the best. At the same time, the oropharyngeal uh, passage, in, uh, the patency of the oropharyngeal passage, you can see best in axial sections. The fractures of the zygomatic arch of the zygoma can also be seen best in the axial 
sections. You will not be able to see this in coronal or sagittal sections. Okay. So, like I said, you have to understand which are the planes to visualize what the best. You know, integrity of your buccal and parietal cortical planes, fracture of the zygomatic arch. All this you have to go to the actual plane to see them. The medial and the lateral poles of the condyle are best visualized. The medial and the lateral poles of the condyle are best visualized in the actual plane. Pulp canal morphology. There is no other plane which is as good as actual to visualize the pulp canal morphology, and so is the tooth positioning. Tooth positioning again. If you really want to see whether it is buccal, whether it is lingual, whether it is you know mesial distal, the dimensions, etc., etc., the best uh, the best plane would be the actual plane. So those are some of the indications in the planes. Okay. So let's come uh, to the coronal plane. Okay. Now this this particular section was taken in the region of the first uh, second premolar, first molar. So these are the, some of the landmarks that you see in this region. Like I said, if you, if the section is moved ahead, you will not uh, see the nasal cavity, not see the nasal concha or the maxillary sinus. You will only see the anterior teeth uh, and part of the nasal spine. For example, if a section was taken here, you would have probably seen the nasal spine in the image that is seen on the right side. Okay. So uh, I hope you are understanding what I'm trying to say here. These are some of the landmarks. Uh, I won't go into that right now. So let's see what are the different. Uh, Indications for a coronal plane or coronal sections. Oroantral fistula. Uh, it is very well visualized in uh, coronal planes, as you can see here. Uh, communication between uh, the oral cavity and the sinus. Oroantral fistula. Buccolingual assessment is again apart from uh, uh, actual plane. It is also very well visualized in the coronal plane. And uh, the superior inferior extent of paranasal pathology. Now, ENT is one area where we are getting a lot of reference uh, for CBCTs simply because the patency of uh, uh, the draining area, that is the ostium uh, in the uh, nasal cavity, is best visualized with CBCT even when compared to a CT, right? And even the different sinuses are best visualized in uh, CBCT. Orbital fractures, uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, one second. Orbital fractures, as you can see here, the tear drop sign, right? The herniation of the orbital contents into the maxillary sinus. They are best visualized in the coronal plane. The superior surface of the condyle and its relationship to the glenoid fossa is again best visualized in the coronal plane. Now let's come to the sagittal plane. Uh, sagittal plane, the indications, uh, as you can see here, the section is taken right in the middle, okay, in the center. Now, in the center, when a section is taken, you will see the cella tersica, you will see the spinoid sinuses, the nasal bone, part of the nasal septum. What's the nasopalatine canal? You know, uh, this is what I mean by how a landmark appears in different planes. Now, all this while in an IOPA or sometimes in an OPG, we see the uh, incisive canal or the nasopalatine canal as a nice rounded heart like structure this is what we have read in textbooks right which is very true you see that in an actual plane you see you see that in a coronal plane sometimes but even in not in even not in a coronal plane but most probably in an actual plane you see that heart shape or round um, nasal and canal but when you see see the same landmark in a sagittal plane you see the nasal and canal to be actually funnel shaped you know so it is very important to remember these landmarks and how it changes shape in different planes, in different sections. Right. So what are the indications of sagittal plane for the anterior posterior uh, area of the uh, condyle uh, glenoid fossa relationship and of dimensions of the condyle? Now, anterior posterior dimensions of uh, the condyle will not be seen, for example, in the coronal plane. Right. So if you want to see the anterior posterior dimensions of the condyle, uh, you cannot refer the coronal plane. That is what I'm trying to stress here. You know, each of these planes, based on what is visualized, has its own indications. You know, so now the oropharynx and the nasopharynx, it is the best visualized in the sagittal plane. 
you can really see the extent of the nasopharynx here you can see the oropharynx here and this is epiglottis so below the epiglottis you have the hypopharynx okay uh, and also the nasal concha and the meatuses the draining pattern okay the draining pattern all this you can see okay right some other indications uh, of sagittal plane is relationship of the maxillary molars to floor of the maxillary sinus now i have showed you axial planes i have showed you the coronal planes you will not see this type of view in any other plane so this is best visualized in the sagittal plane uh, the incisive canal morphology is also visualized the best in the sagittal plane and also the pores of the inferior alveolar nerve within the bone and the its exit at the mental foramen is again best visualized in the sagittal plane okay so now we said uh, i mean we spoke about what are the different indications of different planes they are not necessarily conditions you can only see the alterations in the shape in the area where it can be best visualized which plane it can be best visualized now let's come to indications of cbct in terms of different specialities now 60 to 70% of the indications uh, the referrals that come for cbct is for implant planning uh, it is basically the bread and butter for cbct efforts now in implant planning panoramic and other multiplanar views multiplanar view simply means actual coronal sagittal and a specialized view which is used for implant planning which is known as a cross sectional view is used for implant planning and assessment now implant planning as such is again a different presentation an hour long presentation so i'm not going to go too deeper into that but understand what is this specialized uh, cross sectional view which is used exclusively for implant planning now it is a view which is used for uh, for getting better more accurate results in terms of measuring the dimensions especially in the buccolingual uh, direction now uh, what happens is uh, to the curve of speed which is there as the deep in the posterior region the curve upwards or the, the slant upwards the direction the cbct does not take into account uh, of that when the plane is taken back for example the coronal plane is taken back now unfortunately because this is a webinar i am not really able to explain that in exact terms if, if you had seen me i would have probably showed you much much better in that way but try to understand this try to visualize try to imagine this Uh, so as the coronal plane goes back it does not take into account the curve of speed so what happens is the coronal plane is actually not perpendicular to the occlusal plane it is actually slightly slanted it is not exactly 90 degrees so because of that we are not ending up getting accurate measurements of the buccolingual aspect or the buccopalatal aspect of the bone whether it is the maxillary or the mandibular now what this cross section view does is is it modifies the coronal plane when it goes a little back in such a way that it makes the plane exactly perpendicular to the occlusal plane so because of that you get much more accurate measurements so as you go back the coronal plane is modified in such a way to make it perpendicular to the occlusal plane that is the cross section of that particular area in maxillary or mandible at the same time in the anterior region especially in the midline or slightly uh, both sides of the midline the, the modification of the sagittal plane is done to get that cross section i hope you are uh, understanding what i said it may be a little difficult like i said you have to use a little bit of imagination to understand that but uh, if not i'll try to explain it a little later in case we have time so cross section like i said is the primary diagnostic image used for the assessment of the buccolingual width of bone and uh, because of uh, cbct what happens is superimposition is reduced now before before i actually come to superimposition is reduced we always say that uh, cbct is a 3d imaging it's a, it's not a 2d imaging it's better than 2d imaging but a lot of people confuse with what is 3d imaging and what i what i mean by that Uh, when i ask people what is 3d imaging they say you can see uh, structures in buccolingual you can see structures in mesial distal you can see structures in superior inferior 
but no that is not 3d imaging when I, when i say 3d imaging it means length height and depth now what do you mean by depth again you know how, how do you how do you actually measure depth now for example in uh, now and i've told here accurate measurements to avoid damage to vital structure now um uh, inferior alveolar canal right it moves from the lingual aspect to the buccal aspect opens up in the mental foramen okay but if you take an iopa right the buccal and the lingual cortical plate would be superimposed and you really will not be able to see uh, the height of the bone in relation to the uh, superior border of the inferior alveolar canal but in cbct what happens is you can take a section from the buccal to the lingual aspect of the cortical bone in the mandible at a distance of 0.2 0.5 one millimeter you can you can go on taking sections so those sections between the buccal and the lingual aspect this is just one example between the buccal and the lingual aspect is the depth that i'm talking about right this depth is not seen in 2d imaging now those sections can be this was in in the actual section uh, in the sagittal section those sections can be in the axial also that is up to down or the, those sections can be in the coronal also that is anterior posterior right so that is what is the three, third dimension of cbct right so apart from that pre operative assessment of bone quality and bone quantity like i said uh, although it uh, it does have the tool to measure the hounsfield units it's not very accurate but it gives you an indication of the quality and the quantity of bone also for post treatment evaluation assessment assess the success of bone grafts in implant planning uh, implant failures can be assessed right uh, and uh, the assessment of vital structures is important to avoid complications like nerve injury resulting in hemorrhage and sensory problems now uh, this is a case where the implant was in close proximity to the man mandibular canal right so this can be accessed much better uh, this plane by the way is uh, a cross section uh, modified coronal plane okay yes so this is usually the uh, layout uh, of the images that we provide uh, either on a cd or uh, by giving a plane film so this would be we show where exactly is the position by the virtual placement of uh, implant here uh this is between the premolar and the second molar right uh, so we say exactly what we say most of the times we play, place it in the middle right uh, so these are the different the cross section taken at probably 0.2 to 0.5 mm interval in that particular region okay uh this is exactly the position of the implant in the axial plane right uh, this is to show the quality of bone in sagittal plane right and this is a 3d volume uh, 3d volume uh, is one more specialized uh, view that is seen in cbct it is there in ct also where you will get uh, real life like uh, pictures of the patient's jaws now in endodontic evaluation detection of uh, apical lesions now detection of apical lesions the question would be why not uh, iopa uh, where you know easily you can detect apical lesions now we have all read uh, ki unless there is 35% of bone loss you cannot uh, detect much bony changes in a two, two dimensional radiograph now that is not uh, true in uh, case of cbct in an iopa what happens is unless there is cortical bone loss <coughs> unless there is cortical bone loss you will not see those uh, changes on a radiograph but if there is no cortical bone loss but there is infection which causes bone loss in the cancellous bone then in an iop it will not be visible so for that this sectional uh, uh, sectional technique which is there in cbct which i just told you about it is very useful why because there is no superimposition you can section it right from the cortical bone towards the inside towards exactly where the lesion is there in the cancellous region like here you know like here this would not have been visible in a iopa because of superimposition of the buccal and the cortical plates if there were not perforate okay this would have been visible in iopa if the cortical plates were perforate right now root fractures again very well visualized uh, in uh, cbct both horizontal and vertical 
So, like I said, the root morphology and the, the number of roots, the canals and accessory canals, and establishing the working length, you can do it much more accurately in a CBCD. In this particular case, you can see a first molar here. Uh, the distal root it had four canals, you know, and the mesial root had two canals. And this would have been next to impossible to visualize in a IOP. Root resorption, both external and internal resorption, is visualized well. Orthodontic assessment, there are a lot of indications for orthodontics uh, for assessing facial asymmetry or even soft tissue analysis, for assessment of facial growth, airway function and disturbances in tooth eruption, assessment of proximity to vital structures, which we already mentioned, assessment of bone density before, during and after treatment in uh, terms of treatment with uh, micro implants for anchorage, right? So placement of micro implants for anchorage and retraction. So these are some of the uh, micro implants which is placed in zygomatic bone. As you can see, the exact position in the zygomatic bone of the implants can be really assessed well. You know, uh, as, has it been impinging on any vital structures? Right. Uh, this is the part of the zygomatic bone here. This is the buccal bone area. Right. Now there's something called as virtual self in a CBCT, uh, which is not very reliable, uh, simply because it uh, just uh, kind of estimates the different uh, values and comes up with a two-dimensional uh, self view. Uh, you'll have to take a true self to really do orthodontic studies, but it does give you an idea of how the patient's bone structure is. So there is something called as virtual self which is useful, but not very accurate. Airway volume assessment, we have uh, in, Pl in PlanMeca itself, there's an excellent uh, region growing tool, which uh, assess the airway volume, and it's very easy to do it, and it's very fast also. So these can be uh, done for studies and patients, especially with the obstructive sleep apnea and uh, other conditions. Step palate assessment, uh, whether it is uh, the, the anterior posterior assessment, whether it is volume assessment, whether it is involving structures, like here you can see the floor of the nasal cavity is involved here, you know. So all that can be done for cleft palate in uh, orthodontic assessment. Uh, coming to the specialty of periodontics, uh, not, not much of uh, indications, but assessment of furcation areas, uh, any defects in the lingual and palatal areas. And you can see the defects in the palatal here and the window like fenestrations and uh, dysons you can see and measurement of intra bony defects like i said it's very simple there's nothing much to explain in terms of uh, pedio speciality very simple uh, indications coming to oral surgery now most of the times in oral surgery the main referral we get is for impacted teeth so impacted teeth and of course you can do for tumors cysts etc but most of the times uh, 15 to 20 percent of our cbcd reference is usually for impacted teeth the position of the impacted teeth not only in terms of buccolingual etc but also in terms of proximity to its uh, to the nerve and also in terms of the curvature of the roots and the number of roots okay so three rooted uh, lower third molars are much higher when estimated using CBCT when compared to panoramic radiography. Now variation in the course, shape, curve, and direction of the nerve and its proximity to the tooth can be easily assessed by CBCT. Now you see these sections here, you know, these lines here. So these lines indicate something. For example, one, two, three. Uh, okay, so one, two, three, four, five. These uh, numbers here. Okay, so these numbers are here too. One, two, three, four, five. Now, what does it indicate? This indicates. This indicates. Sorry, I'm not catching. Sorry, I'm not catching. Pointing at the other side. Okay, can I continue? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So these uh, numbers indicate the section at which the CBCT is taken. So, for example, this section one, this is what it shows in the coronal plane. Okay. The section two, this is what it shows. Section three, this is what it shows here. So, exactly at the section. 
So this is the depth we are talking about. You know, where else will you get this? Of course, you will get it in a city, but at a much higher radiation dose, at a much higher co cost. You know, so it all really makes sense to have a CBCT, a two D dimensional, uh, two two dimensional radiograph like OPG or an IOP will not give you so much of information. See exactly the position of the roots here. Uh, this is number four. Come to okay. number four. The position of the root here. The position of the root. Okay. The position of the roots uh, to the uh, canal. You know, it's quite far from the canal. But what you see and what is important in terms of your diagnosis here is. As the roots, for example, let's see number five and number six. As the roots converge, as we reach the end of the roots of this horizontally impacted third molar, what what happens here? These roots are very close to the canal. The root is extremely close at the apex to the canal. So, especially the mesial root of the impacted third molar. So, see the amount of information it is giving you. You see the see the amount of information in terms of the position of the tooth in. terms of its contact with the uh, vital structure like the canal you know at different sections right uh, so there is absolutely no comparison right so this is a case of a dentigerous cyst with an odontoma i'll i'll go a little faster okay so this is a nice case where an opg uh, revealed a nice uh, calcified structure with a big radial lucency so this was in the sagittal section right uh, you can see the extent in terms of anterior posterior extent right uh, this was in the axial section uh, as you can see uh, some some amount of the radio of acidity is here and this was taken now th this section where it was taken is again very important for you to remember right now what happens is this section was taken below the apices of the teeth that's why you don't see the roots of the teeth or the crowns of the teeth etc it is near the inferior border of the mandible so what it reveals is as you go towards the inferior border of the mandible the lesion is actually quite extensive there is both mesial distal extension and antero posterior extension okay right uh, so all this is very important for you to remember as you go higher the lesion starts becoming smaller and at the region of the crowns there is no lesion at all so this is the actual section Uh, this is in the coronal plane not much of information or rather not much of new information apart from the fact that you can see in one particular section the entire odontome structure you know so like i said again i'm stressing each plane has its own importance each section in that plane has its own importance so there is always some new information you will get in those planes or those sections this is again a very interesting case uh, of osteoma right uh, this is an opg now one single information which you have to really remember very well is this would be a classical opg which would have been given to you all that you would see is a nice radio opaque structure of course it's useful information which is an osteoma but what does a cbct do cbct not only shows you the exact position in the same kind of plane okay in relation to inferior border of the mandible but in the axial and in the coronal plane it also shows you very specifically that the tumor or the osteoma is situated on the lingual side near the angle of the mandible right so it gives you a very very specific very very exact information and even for patient education you show this to a patient you know where exactly this particular growth is you know where exactly it is situated how big it is you know the patient also will be very impressed with the kind of technology that you have so fractures again uh, cbct very easy to detect uh, displaced fragment of bone seen here in the lateral wall of the nasal cavity and also condylar fracture where the condyle is displaced mesially because of the pull of the lateral pterygoid muscle right or most of the times the condyle is always pulled towards the medial side because of the pull of the lateral pterygoid again multiple fractures uh, you see parasympathesis fracture here zygomatic arch fracture right uh, this is the angle of the mandible fracture right so you can easily see it in cbc any pathology is affecting the um, uh, maxillary sinus uh, deviated nasal symptom deviated to the right here right um, this is the carcinoma of the maxillary sinus in the left side uh, you can see the entire uh, left 
wall of the nasal cavity and the nasal cavity itself on the left side extending towards the right you know the uh, floor of the maxillary sinus right the thinning of the orbital floor all that is seen so much more clearly in cbct and also simple things like mucosal thickening which is very common in cbct which we never used to come across in two dimensional imaging but like i said it's very very common lot of people have sinusitis so we are actually surprised with so many cases coming where the patient is actually asymptomatic you know there is sinus thickening there is mucosal thickening but most of the times patients are asymptomatic any changes in the condyle again cbct is the best view there is absolutely nothing to even beat it not even ct right so any erosion of the condyle uh, any bony spurs or osteophytes right uh, so these are in different planes in the coronal and the axial plane you can see an osteophyte here in the axial plane see how how it changes the the image changes here you know here it is seen curving towards the inside here it is seen like a parrot beak appearance you know so it's really important to understand the different planes so now let's come to some uh, interesting clinical uh, aspects of uh, cbct it's very simple i just want you to get oriented to how to visualize uh, cbct is better a little bit of understanding for example this is a normal appearing uh, condyle uh, the neck of the condyle right uh, in a coronal plane okay if there is a pathology for example now this is a pathology right so this is how it will appear this is how it will appear normal this is how it will appear abnormal you know there is some displacement from that area not some displacement a lot of displacement from that area so this is a typical case of a condyla fracture now why i am showing you this is not because i feel you cannot diagnose condyla fracture i am showing you this because you not have seen much of normal cbct images so tune yourself to see what is normal so you can understand what is abnormal you know it's very very important to understand the normal anatomy so again this was in a 3d rendered view uh, where you see the normal structure of the mandible the condyle and the coronoid process and the zygomatic bone etc whereas this is a pathological appearance and like i said as you, uh, you can see the displacement of the condyle here right uh, you can see the displacement of the condyle right so like i said this is very very useful for patient education also this 3d rendered view Okay, so this is a coronal plane uh, showing the landmark. Which is this landmark? This landmark is the nasopalatine canal or the incisive canal. What do you see here? The same section, same area in a different uh, two uh, patient, of course. What you see here is this particular canal here is really widened. Okay, because you know what is normal here, which is incisive canal. You can appreciate this widening of the canal. So this is basically the nasopalatine canal. okay so this is again the normal width the normal height of the nasopalatine canal in the sagittal section okay and as you can see here there is some kind of dilatation okay there is some expansion so this again is the nasopalatine canal cyst now this is in the axial section now can you also appreciate the change in shape of the same landmark in different plates now this is the, the nasopalatine canal in the axial plane and this is a nasopalatine canal cyst in the axial section okay so like i said you really have to understand what is normal to understand to know what is abnormal so this again is a normal uh, section in the axial plane uh, probably at the cervical third of the crowns um, where you can see obturated uh, premolars and uh, canals of uh, the first and the second molars right so this is very much a normal section okay in the axial plane so what you can see here you can see here is uh, the premolar here with a single canal right uh, you can see a first molar here with two canals and the distal root with four canals right so this is the abnormal thing here uh, that it has four canals okay so like i said if you understand how each image looks in, in normally you can appreciate the abnormal things better and i'm showing you the simplest of things of course right uh, again this is in the anterior section and axial plane which shows you teeth with the uh, the canals all single canals of course in the anterior teeth now what you see here uh, 
this is what is known as in the lateral incisor here as a C shaped canal. Right. Uh, from an endodontic point of view, it's quite important to understand this. Right. Uh, now let's see here. What you see here is uh, in the coronal plane, uh, you, you see two anterior teeth, okay, with uh, patent uh, canals in there. It's absolutely normal. Now what we see here, the patency of the canal is lost. Apart from that, there is some amount of uh, periapical radial lucency. We'll ignore that for now. But you do not see the patency of the canal here, the radial lucency of the canals here. It's a very simple thing. It's calcified canals. The same thing in the axial section. If you see, you will see the patency of the canal. You see the nice radial lucency of the canals. What you see here, the radial lucency is missing. Right, so these are the calcified canals. Right, um, this again is a normal radical anatomic appearance. The canal in the sagittal section, right? And this is very simple to diagnose a fracture, okay? Tooth fracture. Again, the same tooth you see, nice canal here, patent is intact. What you see here, a very nicely shaped internal tooth is option. Okay. Now, one more case. Uh, this again is sagittal section in the body of the mandible. You see the inferior alveolar canal. Uh, the bone looks ab absolutely normal. Uh, the superior border of the alveolar bone seems to be intact. Okay, everything is quite normal here. What you see here, you see there is some amount of radial lucency which is irregular with irregular borders, some area of moth eaten like appearance. Okay, and very close to the mandibular canal. So this was a case of osteomyelitis. Okay, so just I mean I'm just showing you to orient to all of you the difference between what is normal in a particular area and what happens in pathology effects in that area. So this is in a 3D rendered view. See, uh, this is again a normal area of the bone in the body of the mandible. See the kind of changes that is. So much appreciative if you want to educate the patient. Okay. Now, why I'm saying always the 3D rendered view is if you want to educate the patient is simply because in terms of specifically diagnosing a condition based on only the 3D rendered view is not an intelligent thing to do. You know, because this is a rough estimation where the software estimates uh, the information it gets from the different voxels and pixels it accumulates. And it gives you an image here. But this did not necessarily be completely true. To be specific in your diagnosis, you have to rely on your two-dimensional axial, coronal, or sagittal views only. Remember that. But if you want to educate the patient, if you want to show a gross area where it is destroyed, etc., etc., then yes, this is an excellent tool for patient education and awareness. Uh, this is an interesting case we had. Uh, this is a normal 3D rendered view. Okay. Now, see in this patient. Can you see nice two radiopaque wall like structures hanging in the air here? Okay. On the lateral side, uh, on the left side. Okay. So these are basically mesentric calcifications. This was again in the actual plane. As you can see here, uh, mesentric calcifications. Okay, over here. Right. So let's come to one more chapter uh, part, which is two dimension versus three dimension. What is the difference? Right. So in a two dimension, now for example, this was a patient who, who had come to a doctor uh, with history of trauma. Now the patient uh, had some amount of calcification, which was visible on an IOPA. It looked like the can canals were calcified. And the doctor tried to uh, open the canal, but uh, he was meeting a lot of obstruction. He could. There is a periapical radial lucency here also. So he thought it's a calcified canal, and he referred the patient to CBCT. Now, unfortunately, CBCT not only helps a doctor in identifying a lot of things, it also exposes the doctor to some of the mistakes he does. So here, what was the mistake he did? Instead of opening the canal, he opened up the cingulum area and he tried to go inside this calcified structure, which was again an impossible task to do, but somehow he managed to actually accomplish it. You know, so the canal was actually not calcified. 
you can, you can see the patency of the canal is very much there. It is not really that bad. Okay. Now, as you can see here in the actual view, right, he is tried to enter the canal only through some other area in the palatal aspect. And as you can see, like I said, uh, probably in the cervical third, the canal is a little calcified, but uh, he didn't enter the canal itself. So, no question about that. So, you see the how much it helps you to diagnose the exact condition. And like I said, in this particular case, it didn't really help the doctor, but uh, yes. Now, this was a very interesting case. Uh, patient had the proximal caries. Uh, there was some amount of bone loss, but there was continuous pus discharge for a period of almost two years from the palatal aspect. So there was an abscess, okay? But uh, when we see, when we took an IOPA, there was no changes at all. You know, the bone seemed to be intact. Okay, in terms of periapical area. But uh, when we took, uh, one second. when we took a CBCT, as you can see in the palatal aspect, uh, there was nice amount of perforation here. Okay, so this was the cause uh, for the palatal abscess or the palatal draining sinus, a nice area of uh, perforation in the palatal bone. Now, this was in the actual plane, as you can see here, a nice area of uh, radiolucency in the periapical area. Now, the most striking uh, change, apart from these two, was the fact that in the mesial and the distal root, there was actually a periapical radiolucency, right? So, this was an immediate uh, case for an RCT, which was not done, and you see the amount of new information we got when compared to an IOPA in the CBC. Okay, now this was a case uh, where an obturation was actually done, right? There was a periapical radiolucency which did not go even after the obturation. So an IOPA was taken after that. And uh, what the doctor saw was that his obturation was not good. And because of that, the patient had a draining sinus. So he panicked and he sent us this case for a CBCT. And what it revealed was there was both buccal and palatal cortical plate loss. Uh, even though in IOPA it did, did reveal some amount of external root resorption, in an CBC it revealed the extent of the root resorption, which was quite high, you know. And in actual again, it reinforced uh, the fact that there was both palatal and the buccal cortical plate uh, loss. Okay, it was a hopeless case basically. It, it has to go for an obturation and probably an implant. Uh, not obturation, but extraction and implant, sorry. And one good thing where it helped the clinician here, unlike the first case where uh, it exposed the clinician that he was uh, trying to enter through some other area into the canal, here it actually helped the patient because his obturation was not bad. The obturation was quite good, you know. In an IOP, it looked like the obturation was bad, and because of that, probably the patient had uh, his draining sinus. But uh, the case was a hopeless case. Uh, his obturation was not bad, and you could see that both the buccal and the cortical, uh, I mean, the cortical plates were completely perforated. Right? So, here, like I said, it, the added information actually helped the clinician. Let's come to one more case here. Uh, this is a very simple case. There was a nice periapical radiolucency in the IOP of the central incisor region. So, but patient had no history of trauma, no pain, uh, no draining sinus, etc., etc. So we did suggest uh, we did suggest uh, CBCT, and what it showed was a nice enlarged radiolucency, which was of course, as you can see here in the actual section and in the sagittal section. It is a very simple case of. Uh, Nasopalatine canal cyst. Okay, but we did suspect that in the IOPA itself because the patient had no other signs and symptoms or history. Okay, this is again an interesting case uh, where patient had severe pain in the first molar. Okay, IOPA did not reveal anything at all. There was no caries, there was no periapical radiolucency, and all history was negative. Now, in uh, I, uh, CBCT in the axial plane, See how immediately we could diagnose. This is the first one. How immediately we could diagnose. It is a case of a horizontal transverse fracture. As you can see, it's a hopeless case because the fracture is extending in the coronal plane almost to the percussion area. 
so this is a bad case could anything could not be done about it but as you can see in the iop it, it does not reveal anything at all so this is a 3d rendered view it is a nice case of uh, fracture so there was one more section that i had to take uh, which i thought you should understand but i think it's almost time so i'll just run through it uh, so that is artifacts now when you talk about artifacts there is uh, graininess in the uh, cbct which is caused by what is known as image noise there's nothing really too much that you can do about it uh, but uh, pr probably keep calibrating your cbct machines you know that is one way of doing it then you also have uh, coupling artifacts because of increased uh, dark bands that are formed uh, there are streaks because of metals and like i said the dark bands right uh, so again like i said artifacts by itself is not only a different chapter but uh, i think i have exceeded my time so i really not go into these artifacts but you just need to see them to understand these artifacts and there are also metal artifacts and motion artifacts which are patient induced artifacts there are also what are known as scanner based artifacts which are nothing to do with the operator or the patient but uh, some inherent problem with the uh, cbct scanner uh, they are basically uh, ring artifacts cone beam artifacts and aliasing artifacts uh, cone beam artifacts uh, uh, cone beam artifacts simply because because of the divergence of the cone beam uh, the peripheries are not well visualized so those are cone beam artifacts ring artifacts is when there is some problem in the detector element and uh, when the cone uh, when the cbct machines goes around the patient the detector element defect also gets imposed on the image so it forms a ring like structure so that is ring artifacts and aliasing artifacts are basically wavy or streaky lines which are seen on the images uh, due to undersampling of the particular region which is again because of a defect in the scan So these artifacts are the more common ones which you need to remember. So everything is not rosy, rosy for uh, CBCT. Something is not so cozy. Uh, so there are some limitations of CBCT. For for example, the penetration um, among the dentists. Even though many uh, centers do have come up, but even now it is very less. The knowledge and awareness, especially in terms of the anatomy, especially in terms of its indications, especially in terms of its interpretation, is very less among the B dentists. soft tissue contrast is not at all uh, good in cbct it's negligible hounds feel units which i have already mentioned which i hope you remember cannot be estimated in cbct <coughs> cost factor is again a concern of course it is much less than a ct machine but it is still more uh, than a conventional two dimensional opg machine and the dose even though the dose is still less than a ct machine it is still on the higher side especially when you take a large field of view cbct when compared to two dimensional uh, image so what's the final take home message it produces the uh, cbct produces the most anatomically accurate 3d images of the face and the jaws uh, there is much better patient compliance because of an open environment a fast comfortable and safe open environment scan increases the patient's comfort level decreases the anxieties and the 3d images like i always kept mentioning it helps the patients understand relationship between the dental structures and the facial appearance much better so i'm sorry for uh, going really fast to the artifacts i really want to take some more time with it you know and make you understand a little better but uh, i guess we ran out of time uh, so if there are any doubts of course you can ask me now or you can also email me there's no issues you can contact dr ausul for that okay so thank you all any any doubts if you have you can please ask me uh, i'm very much there so we have uh, some questions from the audience sir so can yes. we share them yes yes please do one minute uh, ramesh yes sir thank you dr vinayth yes uh, was an enlightened session thank I you have, sir i have listened uh, uh, attend the full session and you have simply and very nicely presented very thank you sir very okay uh, we have uh, in future, uh, one more session from you we are expecting one more session <laughs> <laughs> definitely sir i will okay. I, i i'll tell you very honestly yes. i i would like the face to face session rather than online you know because uh, what happens is face to face uh, there's always better interaction and sincerely why the you know, nice presentation yes, yes ah, you know, so sometime okay. in the future maybe yes ah, okay then uh, i have one doubt uh, yes please uh, 
uh, actually before that uh, we are uh, uh, usually collaborate with the photonics the hmm. house of sirs uh, and uh, dr correct correct, uh, correct. and uh, yes. we have sending uh, so many maxill i am a maxillofacial surgeon okay and uh, okay. sending cases different uh, type of uh, for reconstruction purpose and uh, orthognathic uh, virtual surgery yes sir and uh, you have explained so many so scope of uh, uh, cbct yes and, sir uh, i have one doubt if yes, there is the uh, tumor uh, yes. inf infiltrative lesion yes, about sir. the uh, perforating the cortex cortex yes. and can we assess the any soft tissue infiltration from the cbct itself or uh, uh, sir uh, that would not be a good thing to do Uh, okay. because uh, in terms of uh, soft tissue extension cbct is not a good uh, imaging modality oh, okay now uh, what they say is it's a very simple thing to understand the word is a, the word is a little complex uh, cbct has better spatial resolution and uh, uh, ct has better contrast resolution okay, okay now like i said it's a very complex uh, term but it's very easy to understand by spatial resolution you mean uh, like for example there is bone and there is maxillary sinus okay right so they are in terms of contrast they are very different you know one is totally radio opaque and one is totally radio lucid okay 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 so but cbct between these two spaces to understand the difference is much better technology when compared to ct because the densities are very very different okay but but if there is for example muscle if there is fat if there is salivary gland and there is some extension there of some pathology their densities are very similar in the sense uh, they are all probably plus 100 plus 50 you know the densities are very similar because they are all soft tissue so to make out the difference there you need what is known as contrast resolution to make out the difference in the first this thing spatial resolution is enough and spatial resolution is very good in cbct one doubt But, in ct this is better okay okay one doubt i have one doubt can yes. you give contrast uh... no no as of now no as of now oh, no okay okay as of now then then you have mentioned that the airway the yes sir. in uh, when you are do, doing the orthognathic surgery when uh, we have a pg study uh, this is top yes sir. yes we, when we set back the uh, uh, sagittal split in the two years back we have selected that at the yes. uh, at, uh, mri we have used the mri for the uh, measuring the airway volume yes sir yes sir uh, we have mentioned that the uh, airway volume can be measured by using the cbct okay. absolutely sir uh, absolutely okay. you, you, you the, there is a region growing tool the, i mean it's basically a software which is available in uh, especially in planmeta okay. uh, all that you have to do is uh, see the extent whether it is you want to measure the volume of the nasopharynx or you want to measure the volume of the oropharynx okay. especially oropharynx because again what happens is uh, the soft tissue of the soft palate okay, okay. and uh, the uh, radial lucency of the airway there are two different uh, radio densities totally so it's very easy to identify the uh, the point of the soft palate the point of the epiglottis right so you just have to connect these points and uh, press the region growing tool by, uh, icon Okay. and it measures the volume for you okay you don't have to do anything else and it measures the volume for you in all the planes okay absolutely But, no issues okay okay <laughs> what about the uh, tmj of uh, in addition to fracture hmm. any role in the uh, meniscus uh, displacement any any no no, no 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 that is not possible uh, no. only uh, if that, there is bone tectonic yes, yes. okay if there is bone on, and if there is an extent into the sinus okay okay then it's very easy okay okay but right. if, but anything to do with soft tissue in terms of its extent and all it is not a good uh, tool as of now cbct although although they are improving the software so that uh, you can see the difference in the software density is much better you can appreciate it better but it yet not come facial bone fracture facial bone fractures and you can oh yes oh, yes yes, yes. Okay. all bony fractures pan facial fractures okay. definitely cbct you can easily use okay. thank you thank you so much thank you thank you sir uh, sir uh, i will have one question uh, yes, from sir, please yes so uh, to us asking that like most of the dentists will have a confusion like when we are uh, sending the patients for cbct hmm. 
uh, how do you assure the patient like uh, the radiation dosages uh, they'll be having the concern that they are being radiated more or less compared to the normal radiations which we have in our normal dentistry yeah see uh, first of all uh, uh, okay now let's leave aside cbct for a while first first of all let's say iopa or iopa especially the radiation dose is less lesser than what we get uh, on a normal uh, you know radiation around us on a day to day basis okay so in dentistry what i'm trying to say here is the radiation is actually still not a concern even with cbct when compared to ct and so you have to tell them first of all it is 10 to 15 to 20 times in some cases lesser than that for a ct 15 to 20 times lesser than that for a ct you have to tell them for example if there is a canal i'm just giving you example by example if there is a canal which is not identifiable in iop okay and uh, the patient is having a lot of pain but you you are not able to identify the cause for it. then you know for a fact the cbct is a superior tool where you can identify it the patient can save his tooth so the patient is the patient bothered about a little more radiation or is the patient bothered about saving his tooth you know so the benefit should outweigh the risks that is how you can explain the patient you can tell him hey, yes the radiation might be a little increase might might increase a little bit but with this you will save your tooth one example i'm giving you there could be other examples also you know different conditions so the bottom line is uh, i'm again repeating it as long as you feel that the benefit will outweigh the risk you can refer the patient to cbct at any point of time okay sir uh, sir again uh, last question yeah uh, if we have an option of ct and cbct yes uh, when should we go for ct and cbct uh most of the uh, orofacial conditions uh, uh, especially the heart, affecting the heart tissue fund especially only affecting the heart tissues only affecting the sinuses it has to be cbct you know there is no consideration for the ct you should not consider uh, ct but if there are conditions involving the soft tissue it should be either ct or mri okay in the orofacial region if it is oral cancer i would still still suggest it should be a ct even though most of the times cbct does help but uh, i in my personal experience oral cancer still ct would be a better option but otherwise any conditions affecting the paranasal sinuses affecting the heart heart tissue structures is cbct that was really an amazing session your session was full of passion and priceless knowledge thank you so much sir thank you